There's the Memes Coalition, which is trying to get a bill passed for free products in the public schools. It's amazing. It's a coalition of high school students, middle school students, college students, law students, um, you know, reproductive rights and justice organizations, justice organizations for women who are incarcerated. They're all getting together and advocating for this bill. And there's Period Equity, which is an organization founded by lawyers. So they're working on legal strategy to address eradicating the tampon tax and making sure products are safe and healthy for people, uh, making sure to end period poverty, that we can get free products in schools, shelters, prisons, um, and maybe even all state buildings. So they're working very hard on that. We've seen some countries actually make pads and tampons free for everyone. Uh, in Scotland now, they're completely free as of I think two weeks ago, which is extremely exciting. I think in general, there's been a rise in marches um, to empower females and just generally like get across whatever they're fighting for. So just there's a lot of organizations that are working to educate. And I think by doing that, they're also informing the public that not everyone has access to these resources. Um, so one of the things that I think that these organizations or companies like do to combat period poverty it definitely include um, educating people at the community level, which is what Wings is doing, or like building up a coalition, um, letting more, making menstruation more of a topic that the general community should like know about and be more open to talking about. The Department of Education has recently made um, menstruation a required topic to teach in health classrooms, um, I think at the middle school level. But um, we see that I think it's 20% of American teenagers don't remember being taught anything about menstruation in their health classes. Um, so there definitely needs to be a lot more work there, but that's just the bare minimum. There is a lot more educational work to be done um, outside of that required health class, um, just making menstruation a societally acceptable topic to talk about. There's been a lot of understanding that over the past 50 years, we haven't really developed new menstrual hygiene products. It's kind of stayed the same. We've seen massive gains in technology. We've seen the internet over this time. We've seen self-driving cars. We've seen so many things, but we haven't been able to shift from pads and tampons. And so there's been a lot of development of things that would make having your period more sustainable and less plastic heavy, uh, menstrual hygiene cups for one, and looking now and doing further research and development into ways to potentially even make periods more controllable or make them hurt less. Another great organization is the Society for Menstrual Cycle Research. It's an academic organization where they research interdisciplinary issues relating to uh, menstruation. Uh, and so there's lots of amazing movements and, and it's an exciting time to be involved in this work because it's something that is so fundamental to human rights, dignity, gender equality, and what I talk about is structural intersectionality because the forces of patriarchy, white supremacy, classism, all come together to effectuate um, oppression or discrimination or subordination of people who menstruate. And that isn't just on the gender binary, but impacts people at the intersection of gender and race or gender and disability or gender and uh, class. So, um, it's an amazing time to be trying to battle these issues and effectuate change.